Hello, I'm Sylvia Plavritis, and I am so delighted to be with you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about AI-enabled research that has helped us understand one of the most life-threatening aspects of cancer, metastasis. Here's a simplified view of metastasis. What we know is that cancer cells detach from the primary tumor and travel and colonize regional lymph nodes and distant organs, shown here as the lung and the liver. And we think that the lymph nodes play a really passive role in the process, that they're bystanders, that they're just a litmus test to tell us if the metastatic process has been activated. But with AI research, we have come to realize that they are actually actively involved in the metastatic process. They may actually be the master orchestrators of metastasis, making us rethink ways to maybe reprogram those lymph nodes to shut down metastasis. So how did we get to this kind of thinking? We generated research data, deep molecular research data on those lymph nodes, the paired primary tumor, the metastatic sites, and we analyzed that research data with clinical data. Now, Prior to some of these recent advances in AI, we would go into the clinical record and pull specific things in the clinical record that we thought would really help us understand our research data. But now, with the advances in AI, we can feed all of the clinical data into our AI systems and have the AI help us understand associations that we would have never even conceptualized between the clinical data and our research data. So we are creating AI-enabled platforms called data lakes that take all of our data, our electronic health record data, which has our lab tests, um, our treatments, our vitals in it, the images from radiology and pathology and those notes, the molecular data that was ordered to tell us if there's uh, a specific oncogenic, um, oncogenic mutation driving that tumor that would sort of dis force us to think about a specific treatment. All of that data is now being established into this data lake that's AI-ready and AI-enabled across the hundreds of thousands of patients, cancer patients we've seen at Stanford. So with that data lake, we can really think about all aspects of cancer care, from prevention to early detection to diagnose, treatment, surveillance, and the management of advanced metastatic disease. And it, across this whole care, we have Stanford researchers coming up with new ways to improve the patient's experience at each point along this cancer care continuum trying to prevent that cancer, and if the cancer is established, trying to control it, eradicate it. And there are research data being generated at each one of these points. And right now, a lot of this data is analyzed kind of in a silo within that particular point in the cancer care continuum. But now that we have access to this AI-enabled data lake, we can actually look at any point in the cancer care continuum with that research data and bring in all the data before and really look at all the data after that point of care and really try to understand that value of the new information. So let's think about some of the hardest cases, the, one, the patients that have metastatic cancer that fall out of the guidelines, and we have to figure out what is the best we can do? For those cases, specialists who have worked with those patients convene at a meeting called Tumor Board. And these specialists talk about their experience with the patient, their understanding of the particular patient. So we have medical, surgical, radiation oncologists, pathologists, radiologists, genetic counselors, nurses, social workers, all convenient, sharing their thoughts, deliberating to come to a consensus on what to do. But behind all these specialists is data. AI can integrate all the data 
behind those specialists. In fact, data integration is AI's sweet spot. So we are building an AI-assisted tumor board that automates the integration of the multimodal data in our data lake. Through that integration, we're designing a multimodal foundation model that at tumor board can be prompted to answer questions. Can you help us predict what is the next clinical event? Can you find similar patients in the medical record? While this patient is unique, across all these axes of this data, have we seen this before? What have we done for those patients? What were the outcomes? Can you help us think about what's the optimal treatment strategy? Can you help us match this patient to a clinical trial? So this type of output is enabled by what we call a multimodal foundation model. And building such a multimodal foundation model is hard, but we're doing it. And we've already seen the power of a multimodal foundation model. You saw it at the beginning of Jonathan's presentation. That video that Jonathan showed you was a result of a multimodal model. It was trained on data of images, audio, text. And it created that movie of Jonathan. In the same way, we want to ingest all of this data, this time course data across the continuum of care, and really understand the dynamic, continuous nature of this disease, the underlying metastatic process, the patient experience, creating almost a movie. So how do we do this? We have all this data. We experience it in such different ways, text, pictures. Um, we have to put all this data into AI language. An AI language is called a feature vector. And there's something called an AI autoencoder to create those feature vectors. And once we have all our data in AI language, we can further train AI models to figure out what part of this data is actually the most relevant part of the data in a specific clinical question. So we can put all the data in, we can put some of the data in, and through this process, we can figure out if our research data was actually really valuable in making better predictions. And maybe even what part of our research data was valuable in making better predictions. So let me try to explain this to you in the context of my research. So this is an image of a lymph node with metastatic cells from a head and neck malignancy. At the beginning, I told you, I study metastasis, and I focus on those lymph nodes. An, an untrained eye may not be able to see the cancer cells in this image, but I will show them to you in the next image. This image is called an H and E image, where H is a hemotuxylin stain that stains nuclei, and E stands for the OSIN stain, which stains cellular structures. This H and E image is a workhorse of clinical pathology. We are now releasing the power of AI to analyze images because we know AI will see things in this image the pathologist has never seen, besides looking at it for, despite looking at it for decades and annotating it. So we are not giving AI algorithms only the H and E image. We are taking that same tissue, and thanks to Rev to revolutions in biotech, we have new tools that we can stain that image with more colors. I'm showing you four colors here. This Im these colors are resolved at the level of a single cell. The yellow cells are the cancer cells. I told you I would show them to you. The red cells are the vasculature, the light blue are the immune, and the dark blue are the stromal cells. What's one thing you notice? This tumor is not just cancer cells. There's a lot of other cells. We call that the microenvironment. And with AI, we're really beginning to understand what the role of those cells are in sustaining that tumor and how to target them therapeutically. We are at a point now where we are not only imaging, like this image that I showed you, we actually, I'm showing you four colors. We act, I can actually show it to you in 60 colors because we've actually, and those 60 colors are 60 different proteins. And in fact, 
I can show you this image in 5,000 colors because we have technology now that can measure 5,000 genes at a single cell. So think about that for a second. We have 100,000 cells. We can get 5,000 markers. That's like 5 billion points of data just for this one slice of one tumor. We want to analyze a whole tumor. We want to analyze hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of the tumors. We need AI. So we have been analyzing this very big data on many sets of tumors with AI tools that we've been developing and training, and we've learned some very interesting things. First of all, the AI algorithms are telling us that these tumors have structure in them. And in fact, there's about eight ecosystems where an ecosystem is defined as a collection of cell types in a very specific pattern. And this particular specimen has three major ecosystems. One that's enhanced in yellow white tumor malignant cells, one in green that's enriched with immune cells, and one in orange that's enriched with stromal cells. And now we combine this data with the clinical data. And what do we learn? We learned that tumors that have orange ecos ecosystems behind, between the yellow and the green, those patients do worse. In fact, the more orange cells there are, the worse the outcomes. And interestingly, as we study this, it almost appears that those orange cells are almost providing a fortress around the cancer cells so the immune cells can't get in. So we're thinking how we're going to break that down. With this data, we can actually resolve all the cells that are in there and likely how they're communicating and thinking therapeutically how we can break that fortress and eradicate this tumor. So in summary, AI is helping us move forward on two major fronts. One is advancing clinical decision support, because now we're ingesting all the data, making decisions across the clinical care continuum. And to demonstrate this, I talked about an AI-assisted tumor board. The second front is advancing our understanding of human tumor biology in the clinical context because we have so much research data, and we can now connect it with our clinical data. This is powerful. And I showed you this dem a demonstration of this with the work we're doing with the lymph nodes to understand metastasis. So where are we? We are together in an incredibly exciting time. We are within our reach, our advances in precision health that we could never have imagined. And within our reach is a possibility to really win this war on cancer. By winning one battle at a time, by understanding that tumor microenvironment and all the molecular mechanisms associated with metastatic progression. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>